The idea of cognitive reserve is that there's these brain changes that occur with aging or with Alzheimer's disease, and some people can cope with those changes better. What we've learned is that some people can tolerate a lot more brain change than others before their clinical function is affected. And that's a very important thing to think about. Why can some people handle a lot more Alzheimer's pathology, let's say, than others, and still remain non-demented, not, not even a change in function? Uh, as a matter of fact, we know that, that um, some people actually go to autopsy, cognitively normal, and they have Alzheimer's pathology in their brain. Some of the original studies were done would, would be to take healthy elderly people, follow them over time, and look to see who was more at risk for getting Alzheimer's disease than others. And some of the things that we saw early on were that people with higher educational attainment had a reduced risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. That doesn't mean that they don't ever, but their risk over a period of time is lower. People with higher occupational attainment had a reduced risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Same thing with people, elders who engaged in more leisure activities and people who had higher uh, social, larger social networks. So all of these things seem to be associated with a reduced risk of developing the disease. And the logic that many investigators, including myself, took from that is maybe these exposures, these life exposures, imparted something that helped us cope with this pathology better. It's not that you're born with a certain amount of reserve. It's sort of a very flexible thing. And every experience during life imparts its own piece of reserve. So education is one part of it, but the job you do is another. The leisure activities late in life are another, which suggests that every experience throughout life could impart this reserve. So the intriguing possibility is that either, even later in life, you could uh, engage in activities that would provide greater reserve and reduce your risk of developing dementia over time. Exactly what that recipe would be is not known. That's a matter of research. But you could imagine that uh, given all of the things that we've learned that are involved with reserve, it could be engaging in stimulating activities, just staying active, maintaining social connections, uh, perhaps doing things that are cognitively stimulating, but not necessarily. It could also be um, engaging in activities that people like.